All right, guys. I got a very special topic for everyone out there. Um, I'm going to talk about three powerful steps on how to close more deals. Okay. And these three steps I've been using for over 30 years. And it doesn't change. It's basic fundamentals. Everything in business is done on this premise, from the movie industry to the marketing to advertising. These are the three major steps on how to close more deals, okay? Now, for me, most of my deals, if not a majority of my deals, or a high percent of my deals, are done via telephone, okay? So it's going to be three steps, and they're going to be very powerful yet simple steps that you can work on every single day. And if you do these three steps consistently and it becomes muscle memory, not only does your engagement increase, but your engagement has become more powerful, more effective, more engaging, which leads to better relationships. But the second part of the engagement is the conversion ratio towards that or with that engagement. You see, there's one thing taking action. There's another thing taking the right action. There's another thing engaging people. There's another thing in making a personal engagement, authentic engagement, sincere engagement, two different animals. What I'm going to share with you today in this three-step process or three parts, it's actually three-part video, is how to close more deals, how to convert more leads into sales, how to convert prospects into customers and then turn those customers into clients or what I call profitable relationship. So stay tuned, buckle up, and get ready for an incredible ride of your life. Now, for the introduction. All right, guys. Welcome to my weekly sales training. It's called the Martial Arts of Selling, and it's sponsored and produced by my company, Paul Cruz Sales Agency. And so what I'm going to share with you in part one of a three-part series in how to close more deals, how to get more effective engagement with prospect and converting them into a customer. And here's what I want you to keep in mind. We're all customers in one form or another, right? Most of us are business owners and entrepreneurs, and all of us are salespeople. That's right. All of us, you, me, everyone we talk to, we're all salespeople. The only difference is a lot of people don't want to admit that they're salespeople, and that's a shame because it's the best profession in the world. In my personal, humble view, I may be biased, but I challenge anyone to tell me that everyone's not a salesperson because everything we do, we're selling. When you're communicating with people and you're talking with people and you're building relationships, that's what selling is. Selling is about communication and relationship. That's simple, but that's not the topic for today. Okay. Step number one is the most critical and important step you could ever take whether you're making phone calls, cold calling, whether you're putting uh, a content together to get people engaged and take action, whether you're sending an email or a text message, a video, Zoom call, the initial introduction of yourself is the most important thing in the whole selling process. And I'll give you an example. For me, I cold call. Everyone knows that. I have three to five seconds on their initial cold call to earn their trust, to earn their respect, and to show value. How do you do that three to five seconds, right? It's what you say, how you say it. So step number one is what I call the opening. Because everything we do in life, there's always an initial opening, right? Everything is cold but you have to warm it up, right? Whether you go to a social media event, a seminar, an engagement, and you're meeting new people, someone takes the initial action, right?
but his first cold. So the opening of any initial contact is the most important step. I call it setting the tone for the conversation. Because if you take the action, you have to set the tone for how the prospect is going to respond to you, right? And here are three things, maybe four, maybe five things that should be emphasized in the first step. Or there are three to five things that actually happen in the first step. Okay, besides earning trust, respect, and showing value in the initial call, three to five seconds, there's three things that a prospect is going to see of you and that you're going to be giving to them. The first one is if you want to set the right tone, you got to have a perceived value, right? They have to know that they're not wasting their time and that you have some sort of value that they're willing to listen to you. It's called perceived value, right? In order, or at least for me, in order for you to show perceived value, believe it or not, you have to be excited about what you say. They have to feel what you say. They have to understand what you say. They have to be convicted or convinced that what you say initially is going to be worth their time. Like a, a movie trailer, right? How do they get you to go to the movie theater or to watch it on Netflix or watch it when it's coming on video? They give you a little 30 second or minute trailer and they get you hooked. That's what the initial step is, is a hook. It should be leading you to building a relationship or going to step number two. We won't go there right now. But I want to explain a little further step one. Now, in step one is setting the tone or the opening, right? The opening sets the tone. How do you set the tone? Well, for me, for example, when I cold call, I already know what the prospect is going to be thinking. I already know there's going to be one or two reactions I'm going to get when I call them. I already know that. So I'm already prepared. I'm already with my weapons, with my rebuttals. Because as a professional salesperson and as a closer, I have to be ready to take it on. I cannot do it half-assed. I have one shot. Now I'm going to maximize that one shot. So let me give you an example. I know that when I call people, and they're not expecting my call. They may not know who I am. They're going to have three things on their mind. They're not interested. They don't have time. And they don't have money. Those are the three major things that they're thinking. Whether they say it or not, it's different. I know what they're thinking. So I should be more prepared, right? So the way I earn respect and the way I earn trust, whether they're interested or busy or have no money, the first thing I say is, you get a lot of these calls, right? Yes, chances are they're going to say yes. You get a lot of these calls, right? I'm saying it twice because I want to emphasize this. When they say yes, then you follow with another statement. It's called a sympathy statement. I understand and respect that. That is so powerful. I understand and respect that. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Because as I mentioned to you, I know what they're thinking. They get a lot of calls from people. They get a lot of solicitations. They might be busy and then I got them on the phone. They might have been in a meeting and I persuaded the, the, the secretary or someone to get them on the phone. And now they're pissed off. Now they're busy, right? That's their mindset. So by acknowledging that I understand and respect how they feel, they don't have any ammunition to come back at me. 
Again, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So let me repeat that. You get a lot of these calls. I understand and respect that. Okay? Now, how do I earn value? See, I just earn respect right there. Right? Now I'm going to earn value. Then I follow up. If I could show you a way to increase your sales volume and grow your cash flow, would that be a value to your business? Would that be a value to you? Now, just think about that. Again, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Because in their mind, they might be thinking, you're not for real. So they may not take you serious. But you have to say it with conviction. You have to say it in a manner that they're convinced, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's hitting me. But if you say it right, who's going to argue and say they don't want to grow their sales? They don't want to increase their cash flow. Who's going to say no to that? So when I say, if I could show you, which means I have to prove to them and show them how I'm going to do it, right? So if I could show you a way to increase your sales or grow your sales and increase your cash flow, would that benefit your business? Typically, if I say it right, I'm going to get two responses in one response. Yes, that would, that would be good. And then the next question, they're going to say, how would you do that? Which is what I want them to say. Okay? I follow up with this. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm glad you asked that question. Then I follow up. I'm starting to transition to step number two. So here's what I say before I start step number two. Mr. Client, Mr. Prospect, what I would like to do is ask you a few important questions about your business, about your customers, and who would you like to see customers in your portfolio? Or how many new customers would you like to have in addition to what you have over the next 12 months? And if I could be a value and I can actually produce that, maybe we could do some business. If not, I thank you for the opportunity you've given me and we'll part ways as friends. Fair enough? Now, what did I just do there? I took all the defense mechanism there, all the skepticism they had, and I just taught their language. I piqued their interest. I got them to see certain vision with the words that I'm saying. I'm producing a movie as the director. They're the lead actor or the lead actress. That's the hook. That's the opening of the call for me. That's the opening and setting the tone for the relationship. Does that make sense? And then I follow up with this. If I could be of value today, right? I would love the opportunity to earn your business or earn your relationship, whether it's today or the next six months from now. That's a powerful statement question. Why? Because what they're going to remember is the relationship in six months. So what that does, it puts their guards down. They're relaxed. Meanwhile, I'm trying to sell them today. Because I'm going to show them value. I'm going to give them value. I'm going to offer them value right up front. They're not going to have any doubt that I could do <coughs> what I say I'm going to do. That is the opening. That is the most important, powerful thing you can do 
to close more deals. Because you can't get to step two or three unless you're very effective in step number one on how to close more deals. Does that make sense? So this is step one. I hope it was helpful to you. You know, take some notes down. I'm going to get a little bit deeper in step number two. But I hope this was helpful. If you're watching this on my channel, do me a favor. You know, hit the subscription button below. Share your comments. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, subscribe. Just hit the button below. And then stay tuned for step number two because this is where the meat and potato is. This is where you're going to earn your pay. This is where you're going to know if you have a relationship with this prospect that you're going to know whether this prospect can afford to pay for your product and services. So number one is the most important. And step number two is the most valuable part because this is where the rubber meets the road. And then step number three is where the win-win takes place. This is where the relationship starts to be solidified. Does that make sense? So anyway, I thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you're watching this on my channel, hit the subscription button below. Share your comments, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And also, stay tuned for step number two because it's going to blow your mind. Thank you again, and we speak again. Bye.